So, building a hardtail. This is part two. <laughs> Welcome back to the Hill of Dave build. This is part two. Part one, we had a look at the frame. We got the bottom bracket in place and we also installed the rear hanger. So now we're looking to get further ahead and we're looking at the front end. So we're going to be installing today the forks. We're going to be having a look at getting the headset in obviously to get the forks in place. We're going to be installing the stem and the handlebar. So that way we've got something to attach everything to as we progress in the build. So I had plenty of choice when it came to the forks. And what I've decided to go with is Manitou do a fork called the Matic. It's a 34 millimeter stanchion, which isn't as thick as the pike fox that originally intended for it. However, it does have a lot more tunability. So I've got control of the low speed, high speed. I've got control of um, the, the spacing at the top. So the last 30% of the travel, I've got a lot more control over rebound adjustment as normal. And obviously it's an air system. So instead of the standard 150 millimeter 29er forks that come on the Hello Dave, I've went for a 27 and a half and I've went for 160 millimetre of travel. So it's put it roughly in about the same place. I've got a little bit more head angle, so I'm 61 degrees now, so it's got even slacker. Um, but I find that this is a better fork between the two, so it's a lot more tunable and suits the character of the bike a lot better. So now comes the time that we're gonna install everything together. We have, at the moment, we've got our frame, we've got our cups, top and bottom, and we've also pre-installed our bearings as well, top and bottom. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of grease to the inside. Now this, again, will stop any creakings from coming in between the steerer on the fork. So, next thing we need is going to be our fork. So our fork's going to insert all the way up to this crown, all the way into the bearing here. So we we'll slide up. And out the top, as far up as we can push. And then what we need to do is a couple of spacers go on top. So first one is a tapered spacer. And that conforms to the dimensions of the bearing inside as well as the steerer tube. So that goes in there. You might need to wiggle the steerer tube back and forward to make sure it gets itself fully pressed down. Once you have that in place, there'll be some form of weather seal. This is a Brand X set that I'm using. So this just pushes over the top and that's going to seal the bearings inside. Now, the bearings inside do have a weather seal, but this is to doubly make sure that nothing gets in through the top. So it makes the bearings last a lot longer. We're now going to grab, while I'm still holding on to the bottom end, the handlebar assembly and stem. So here we are here. And that is just going to go on top here. And we're going to be pushing it down as far as we can. At the moment it's not all the way fully down. But the way we get there is by the top cap. So the top cap is going to tighten on top. And we're going to tighten this down. So that it takes the plane, it pulls the steerer tube up against all of the bearings down low up top, compresses the whole assembly so that it's in the right place, that there's no place. So you shouldn't be able to move up and down once this is in place properly. So you will need a 5mm hex key or allen key or whatever you prefer. I'm just using a multi-tool here. And we're just going to go until all the plate is taken out. For professional finish, you want to line your top cap up with the branding. So if I just back that out just a little bit, it allows me to move it to where I want it to be. And then we tighten down. Now we're not looking to go really tight here, we're just looking to take the play up. So. I'm not using a lot of torque there, just enough so that it pulls everything up the way towards this top cap. And now all I need to do is tighten these pinch bolts on the side. So I'm just going to roughly 
eyeball it because when we jump on the bike at the end of the build we'll be setting all this up anyway so I'm just going to turn until I feel a slight resistance and then I'm going to go on the other side these bolts on this particular headset are four millimeter heads so four millimeter allen key or hex head is what you'll need but that does vary depending on how heavy duty or not the headset is so that there is tight enough for us now but it's important that you don't ratch it and really tighten down on these bolts these are again meant to only be about five or six newton meters so they're not very tight essentially they're just tight enough so that they don't roll when you push down on them so that's them in place and when you're putting them together when you go for the final tighten so it's not tight yet this is a bit loose but you do it in a cross fashion so you would maybe do top left bottom right bottom left top right so you would go around maybe a quarter turn on each until you got the play taken out and then you get your torque wrench on and take it to five or six newton meters again moving in this cross pattern and that way the face plate is pushed in evenly instead of maybe pulled off at the top path and then the bottom two aren't really holding so the idea is you're trying to make this face plate make contact with the entire bar which makes it harder for it to rotate and twist so that's it for part two so if you followed along that's us now got the front forks installed our headset bearings have been installed into the press cups we've installed our spacers that need to be on the top our stem has gone on our top cap has been torqued down to take up the play our pinch bolts are now up there and we also now have our bar in place as well so we have that just loosely tightened up for the moment we will be adjusting that when we jump on the bike when it's fully assembled but for now it's tight enough to hold in place